Hello, I'm Steve Lewis. Welcome to the third module of Applied Statistics for Healthcare Data Analysis. This course is funded by a grant from the United States Department of Labor and uses a curriculum developed by Carnegie Mellon University. In the previous modules, we've used a model of statistical analysis in four phases. The first is drawing data from a population of interest, subjecting those data to exploratory analysis to develop descriptive statistics, applying the principles of probability to those data to draw inference about the population in general based on the probabilities associated with those statistics. Today we're at that third point in the process, the application of the principles of probability. If you remember the graphic of this process in the introduction, called the big picture, this phase, the probability phase, is illustrated as a cloud, and that reflects the fact that what we are talking about here is not an actual mechanical step in the process, but rather a conceptual bridge between exploratory analysis and the inferential analysis based on those statistics. It's described in the course materials as if we were going through actual mechanical steps, but those are simply intended to illustrate how we would arrive at the concepts we use, rather than steps that we actually do perform. Having said that, I think we should start with what we mean when we talk about probability. And probability is characterized as the attempt to quantify uncertainty. There are two forms of probability identified. One is what's called theoretical probability, which is built into a situation. The classic example is flipping a fair coin, where there are two possible outcomes, heads or tails, and each outcome has an equal opportunity of occurring at each individual flip. Therefore, a percentage probability of 50% is built into the situation for each of those two outcomes. Empirical probability, on the other hand, conceptually visualizes a very large number of trials with the results of each trial recorded and a relative frequency table created for the occurrence of each event or each outcome uh, as a result of each of these trials. We go from there to a concept of the random variable. If we are performing trials of a variable, a random variable is one that is assumed we cannot predict the outcome of an individual trial, nor a very small number of trials. But if we conducted a very large number of trials, the outcome pattern, the relative frequency pattern of those trials would become uh, straightforward and predictable. We also distinguish between two different kinds of random variables. A discrete random variable is uh, one where all of the possible outcomes are known and they're measurable. And these could be thought of as analogous to the categorical variables that we discussed in the module on um, exploratory data analysis. Whereas what's called a continuous discrete variable, excuse me, continuous random variable is what uh, we would think of more as a quantitative variable where the measure is not necessarily known and the entire range of possible outcomes is not necessarily known. Thinking more about specifically the idea of a continuous random variable and going back to the idea of a large number of trials and creating a frequency table of uh, variable outcomes, we can assume that as we create a larger and larger number of trials, the pattern of frequencies of 
outcomes begins to approach the pattern of probabilities that would be associated with theoretical probability as we uh, approach the entire number of events that could possibly occur. So if we have a discrete random variable to which we have subjected a large number of trials, the frequency pattern that is created can then be thought of as a probability pattern. The distribution of frequencies can be thought of as the distribution of the probabilities associated with specific outcomes. We can then overlay on that concept the idea of those frequencies being normally distributed. If you recall from the exploratory analysis module, we deal with a concept of a normal distribution, which is symmetrical and is defined by, I should say symmetrical around its central point, the mean, and is defined uh, by the fact that the number of, or percentage of events occurring, of actual outcomes that occur, fall within a defined number of standard deviations above or below the mean. So we are then at the point where we can say that the probabilities associated with a distribution of probabilities of a continuous random variable are normal if we can make the appropriate assumptions about what constitutes normality. And here the key is the concept of the sample size, and we will be getting into that when we talk next time about the concept of a sampling distribution. That's a very small but critically important part of our ability to use probability to bridge the gap between our exploratory data and the ability to perform inferential analysis on that exploratory data. So we will pick up that thread next time. Thank you.